Hello everyone, how are we all? I hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to my channel and to a foodie video. I am truly so excited for this one because I feel like whenever I film these videos, I get a lot of joy out of sharing the recipes online, but also just reading all of your comments and all of your like feedback and suggestions and that kind of thing. So this is gonna be a food filled video. We've got three really easy recipes that you can create at home or vegetarian. However, you can add protein if you'd like. So you can do chicken, fish, pork, whatever you fancy, but these are gonna be really budget friendly meals that are perfect to feed you. You can scale them down. So if you're a single household or you can scale them up to feed your family of four, six and beyond, they all freeze really well too. I'm gonna to be doing a whole voiceover of how you can freeze these. So you can batch cook this in advance which is perfect. Also one of these recipes is gonna be a slow cooker recipe, which is obviously really great for energy saving, and one of them can be completely vegan. So I'm really trying to cover as much as I possibly can because I know now more than ever, it is so tricky with finances. So I really wanna you know, show up and be present on YouTube and offer some easy, tasty, delicious, budget-friendly recipes that you guys can make at home. So yeah, really excited for this one. We're gonna be doing a super green spaghetti. So we've got really lovely greens, three of your five a day in here, beautiful, fresh, zingy. You can add parmesan to make it veggie or you can keep it out completely and make it vegan. Gonna be having that with some lovely crusty garlic bread. Second recipe is gonna be a slow cooker, smoky barbecue chili with jalapeno dumplings. This is autumn comfort food in a bowl, so delicious, perfect for a cozy, cozy evening. You can do that in the slow cooker, which is really really handy you can start on the morning and leave it to do its thing and then the third meal is going to be a bombay balti pie so really really delicious spicy pie with a puff pastry topping i'm going to serve it with some mango chutney glazed broccoli really tasty recipes i'm going to be leaving all of the ingredients down below so you can do a little shop online and um, so yeah without further ado let's get into it before we do if you haven't clicked subscribe please do it helps me out so much it doesn't cost you a thing it's completely free and you can tick the little notification bell so every time i upload a video you can go over and watch it and i'm also going to make a playlist on my channel of every single food video i've ever made so you can just hit play scroll through them all and you can keep a little catalog of all of the recipes that you'd like to create so for the super green spaghetti you are going to need spaghetti you can use tagliatelle you can use bucatini you can use linguine you can use whichever long pasta you'd like i've got some kale here that we actually have in the freezer if you haven't got kale you can use spinach if your spinach and kale is looking past its best, put it in the freezer as early as you possibly can, and it's perfect for this. We've got one leek, three spring onions. This is a roasted garlic clove. If you don't have roasted garlic, you can just use a regular garlic clove, ideally one large one or two small ones. We've got around two large handfuls of frozen garden peas. Olive oil, you're also gonna need some salt and pepper. You're gonna need some dried thyme, garlic granules, and some crispy panko breadcrumbs. So this is gonna be for the top, and again, you can leave that out. And then we're gonna finish it with some grana padano. So that is everything, let's get into it. Start by adding some recently boiled cat water to a pan and season that generously. And then add some olive oil to a dry pan with some garlic salt and some thyme. And then add your panko breadcrumbs. If you haven't got panko, you can just use regular breadcrumbs as long as they're blitzed up finely. And toss that in the olive oil and fry them until they're nice and golden and crispy and transfer them to a bowl. And then you can set them aside. So that's gonna be the topping. Top and tail a leek, slice it down the middle, give it a wash and then thinly slice it lengthways and then widthways. It doesn't have to be too particular because it's all going to get blitzed up, don't worry. And then grab a pasta measure. If you don't have one of these, don't worry, just do a generous portion for a person. So it was for me and Zara, so I did two. And cook that until it's nice and al dente. And then remove your pasta. I didn't do this and I wish I did. Add some olive oil to a pan and then cook your kale and your peas in that pasta water once your spaghetti's been removed. Then slice up a spring onion as well and pop that into your oil with your leek and garlic and just soften that down. It doesn't need to brown, don't worry. And then you can remove some pasta water from your boiling and veggies just a little bit and then drain your veggies you see why i wish i separated the pasta now because you need to blitz up your greens so you've got your kale your peas and your softened leeks and spring onions with about a cup full of pasta water you can add more if you want it to be more saucy i like mine a little bit thick and rough blitz all that up then add your spaghetti back to your pan with your lovely green sauce and just stir all that together until it's beautifully combined give it a nice little toss 
and then you can taste it for seasoning, see if it needs any salt or pepper. I added a good drizzle of olive oil and some black pepper, and then I just plated it up with more of that lovely green sauce on top and that golden crispy panko crumb with some black pepper and some freshly grated parmesan. You can leave the parmesan out if you're not a fan or if you're vegan. And that's it, it is so delicious, so speedy. A couple of steps, but it's well worth it. Okay, so this is meal number two, and this one is kind of like a take on an Indian classic. So we're gonna be doing what is best described as a balti pie. So it's not particularly traditional, but taking all of the ingredients of a balti and kind of like putting it in a pie. <laughs> so you've got a puff pastry top with some lovely spiced roasted vegetables in the filling. Super customizable, you can add chicken if you'd like. So let me show you the ingredients. So this is all of the ingredients. It might look like a lot, but a lot of it is store cupboard ingredients. Once you buy it, you can use it in a lot of different recipes. So, for the base, we're going to be using carrots and sweet potato. We have one large white onion. We've got some frozen garden peas. For the spices, we've got some balsy paste. This is just a really good hack. You can get this in all supermarkets. We just had some left over in the fridge. Of course, you can use different spices depending. You could use a madras or even a korma. We've got some garam masala, some turmeric, and some curry powder. We've also got some tomato puree and some chili flakes. And then to top it, we've got a sheet of pre-rolled puff pastry, and then we're serving it with a side of broccoli. And I'm gonna do that in the pan with some mango chutney. And that is it, that is everything. All right, let's get cooking. Start by preheating your oven to around 190 degrees fan. Peel your sweet potato and chop it up into around one centimeter chunks and then put that into an oven proof dish or a roasting tray. Drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. We've got some chili flakes going on, some curry powder, cumin and some turmeric and then just stir all that together till it's beautifully coated and then pop that into your oven to roast for around half an hour. Then dice up one white onion till it's nice and fine and then you can pop that into a pan with some olive oil. Soften that down with a little bit of salt salt until it's nice and soft, it usually takes about 10 minutes. In the meantime, you can peel your carrots and then just dice those up to roughly to the same size of your onion. Then add your chopped carrots into your softened onion and then just fry that down. It doesn't have to be fully cooked because it is going in the oven. Grab around two teaspoons of your balti paste and then cook that off along with a teaspoon of tomato puree. You need to cook that off otherwise it might be a little bit bitter. Then add your stock cube and around 250 ml, 300 ml of boiling water and then soften all that down. By that time your butternut squash should be roasted and your sauce should be reduced. So then stir through your frozen peas and your roasted butternut squash and then just combine all that together until you've got a lovely nice hearty pie filling. Transfer that back into the roasting dish that you roasted your butternut squash in and level all that off. Leave it to cool slightly before you top it with your puff pastry. You can use phyllo if you prefer but I just crimped the edges of the puff, scored the top with a really sharp knife and then brushed it with a bit of milk. You can use an egg if you prefer and then you want to cook that for around 25 minutes in your same oven that you roasted your squash in. I ended up doing about half an hour. Then I just steamed some broccoli and then took the pie out of the oven and left it to cool before I portioned it up. It's a good idea to do that just other so it's not like the temperature of the sun. Um, while the broccoli was steaming I just finished it off in a frying pan with some mango chutney. This just gives it a lovely nice sweet taste and the sugar in the chutney kind of like caramelizes. I just served that up and then sprinkled some sesame seeds on top just for a bit of texture and some nice visual appearances and that's it. So this is the third and final meal and this one is a firm favorite in this household. It's gonna be my three bean chili, but with a twist because I kind of wanted to make it a bit more autumnal, a bit more hearty and kind of instead of serving it with a traditional rice, chili and rice, we're gonna do some jalapeno dumplings. So this one you can do in the slow cooker. You can prep it in the morning and enjoy it in the evening. So let me show you everything you're gonna need. So this is everything. It might look like a lot, but a lot of it is store cupboard ingredients that you buy once and you can repeat use over and over again. So for the chili, I'm gonna add some butternut squash just because we had it in the freezer left over. You, you can completely leave this out if you like, but um, you need around half butternut squash. I often find recipes for two just use half. So I chop up the other half in the cubes, pop it in a freezer bag. So yeah, you need around half a squash. You're gonna need a red pepper, one white onion, then four Sauces and spices, we've got some passata. You can just use regular passata, but I'm using with garlic, so that's what we had in the cupboard. We've got some paprika, chili powder, cumin, or if you want to completely cheat that, I got this chipotle chili paste. Again, if you've got this lying around, use that because it's basically just all of these spices in one, or if you've not got no spices, just a classic 
red chilli or a green chilli will work wonders. But I think store cupboard spices are really good to have. Three cloves of garlic. Got some coriander here, just the leaves and stalks, absolutely fine. Got some neutral coconut oil, so this is just a light olive oil. Then we've got some black beans, some chopped tomatoes, and some mixed beans in like a spicy chili sauce. And then for the dumplings on top, really simple. Dumplings are kind of like a stodgy cornbread. I can basically describe that if you're not sure what a dumpling is. I've got some self-raising flour, some butter, some jalapenos. You can leave these out if you're not fond of spice and some cheddar cheese, and that is it. And we're gonna be doing this in a slow cooker. Again, if you don't have a slow cooker, don't worry. Really good to invest in one if you do have the budget to do so because they use a lot less power than a traditional oven because you're only heating a small device and it can cook on low for a longer period of time. So we're gonna be doing it in the pan, transferring it to the cooker and then finishing it off in the oven. Start by dicing up one large white onion and then pop that into an oven proof dish and fry that for around five minutes until it's nice and soft on a medium heat and add some salt. By that time you can chop your peppers. I'm just using a red pepper here, trying to save as much as I possibly can. Just dice that up, it doesn't have to be too fine. And then add that into your softened onion and then stir all that together. I'm gonna chop up one green chili. Again, you can leave this out if you're not massive on spice. And then chop up your garlic as well and pop that in with your butternut squash. So my butternut squash was actually frozen. So I added it in just to kind of like defrost it in the pan. But if yours is fresh, you can just give it a roast for about five minutes or you can just pop it in as it is if you just don't want it to have a crispy texture. Cover it in some cumin and some chili powder and then some chipotle chili paste as well. And just give that all of a stir with a little bit of paprika as well. These are your spices and just give it that classic smoky barbecue bean chili that we all know and love. So stir all that together until it's combined. You can see the butternut squash is starting to defrost. I put that into a slow cooker and then I used that pan later on so just keep a lid on it don't wash it up save on washing and then pop your slow cooker on with some chopped tomatoes some mixed beans these are in the spicy chili sauce which is just lovely stir all that together with your drained kidney beans as well so you've got three beans going on lovely high protein dish with a good splash of passata and then just stir all that together until it's beautifully combined. And then you wanna start it on a medium, kinda of like bring it up to a rough simmer, and then you can turn it down low and cook it for around eight hours, or you can keep it on medium for about five hours until it should be lovely and thick. Then make the dumplings with self-raising flour and cold butter, it has to be cold. Chop that up with a knife until you've got breadcrumbs, or you can do it in a food processor. And then roughly chop up some coriander and some jalapenos. Again, if you're not keen on spice, leave out the jalapenos. Stir that through your flour and butter, and then add around three tablespoons of water I think I use in the end to bring it to like a rough door you don't want it to be too wet then grate in your cheddar stir all that together and then that is your dumpling mix ready to go so once your chili has cooked and it's nice and reduced you can then pop it back into your pan the oven wants to be at around 180 190 depending on how powerful your oven is i just portioned up what was needed and there was loads left over i just gave it a bit of a season i rolled out the dumplings and i just popped them on top and pressed them in gently i made six dumplings i put them in the oven to cook for around 25 minutes till they were puffed up lovely and golden brown and that chili is just looking lovely and easy how inviting does that look i sprinkled it with some fresh coriander and then i had some garlic and onion dip in the fridge but if you've got sour cream that would work beautifully and that is it this is such a hearty dish and it's absolutely delish so that is it guys that is my three easy meals you can make this autumn if you have enjoyed this video as always don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you could click subscribe it would mean the world and i'll catch you all very soon in a future food video bye for now